Hello folks, I'm Grimlet from NatchEvil.com, and this is Natchian News. I'll be doing this every Monday, filling you guys in on what's up with NatchEvil and this YouTube channel. We'll start with some quick news, cause I'm only one man, and we'll move on to the World Sin Gate Flash Fiction. If you're new to this channel, we focus mainly on Let's Plays, with video games and a smattering of drawings, stories, and general experiments, but again, mostly video games. Current Let's Plays in progress is Shantae, then we'll finish up Stronghold Quest. To know Grimwit the Clown, me, is to know a man who defines himself as whimsically morbid. I'm also on a suicide mission to make my dreams come true. The dream to only create and not serve burgers while still getting paid. On a final note before we start the show, you may notice ads showing up on the channel now. That's right, I'm now a YouTube partner, and I've also been picked up by Vizzo for promotion. Hello people at Vizzo and BBTV. I figured I didn't have anything to lose, and maybe this will encourage me to put a little more effort into the Let's Plays, or at least finish X Beyond the Frontier. Time will tell. With all that done, here's, canonically, the first episode of Whirlsin Gate. Whirlsin Gate, Episode 1 Define Paranoia by Mike Rojas. March 1921, Wordless Hotel, Ravenlove Street. The whiskey was nearly gone, and something was whimpering. Perhaps a finger's worth of double grain, John Davis figured, before the end of his week's supply, and then John would have to face the horrible truth. Prohibition was in effect. John slouched over his ancient grimoire and shook off the secret spider on the back of his hand. He'd never seen the spider, but he had lived long enough in Whirlsin Gate to know that it was still there. He named it Mittens. Mittens must have hid from the whimpering, too. It had become annoying. He leaned back, pondering this new problem of alcohol, spiders, and whimpering, to take a millionth look at the lobby of the wordless hotel. The empty decay of the broken couch across from his desk, the powdery staircase leading up to the rooms, and the cracked tiles filthy with mud and dust had somehow maintained a cookie golden brown glow despite the lack of lighting. John wanted to get a better look at the old treasure map framed poorly on the wall opposite his desk, but a whimpering man was still in the way. John sighed. <sighs> what is it, Mr. Marshall? D d just David is fine. Uh. David Mitch Marshall had refused to move out into one of the abandoned homes like every normal whirlcinder would. Few people noticed that David Mitch Marshall had a smiling shadow, though he himself was always in a state of worry and mistrust. John could hear it whisper sometimes. L listen Mr. Davis, it's about my room. John held in his panic and quickly searched around for something to occupy himself other than Mr. Marshall's cry for help. Listen, Mr. Marshall, I need to... I, I left this morning. David Mitch Marshall ignored John with a glance upstairs, and everything was fine. But when I returned... I need to go to the store and get some milk, John lied. The store on Blue Crow Avenue, the only grocery store in town, hadn't had milk in the last five years just jugs of dust. It's dark, and the children might come out soon, so I need to... Everything has been replaced with exact duplicates. David Mitch Marshall finished. What? Everything in my room is exactly where I left it, but none of it is mine. David Mitch Marshall fiddled with his hands, eyes aside. How does... John was aware of his eyes narrowing to slits. How do you even know they're copies? I just do, Mr. Davis. C come up and look if you don't believe me. David Mitch Marshall lived in room 308 that had a remarkable green door. It was the only green door in the building. John had tried to paint it once and woke up in the morning with all the work reverted and no memory of the previous three days. 
The same thing happened if he painted any of the other doors green. Just green. Not that it made room 308 different from any other room. Down in 201, for example, was a room where sound couldn't be made. David Mitch Marshall fiddled with his keys and opened up 308 for John, but neither went in yet. Instead, the two merely leaned forward and examined the room from a safe distance. Everything was there. One twin-sized bed, a chest of drawers with the top half open, a green lamp stand with a candelabra welded poorly at the top, but still plugged into the socket, curtains half hiding the street's view of Ravenlov below, and a hat rack at the furthest corner. This was the same from the last time John had seen room 308, but just as the tenant had complained, none of it was genuine. Even the nightstand had the same broken leg as the last nightstand. Well, I'll be, John said, braving the inside of the room. Has this happened before? N -n 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 no, sir. It's amazing. They've even copied the scratch marks on the drawers exactly like the last one. He pulled a drawer open. Are your clothes the same? N no, sir. The, 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 they're not mine. The, they're another copy. This must have taken weeks to do. Everything looks exactly like the furniture I put in here. John pulled out a magnifying glass and focused on the candelabra lamp hybrid. Even the metal is welded the same. Amazing. I could swear this is the lamp I made, but for some reason, it isn't. Well, sir... I don't intend on staying in this room another night. I can't get over it. They used the same amount of metal and the same amount of heat, shaped exactly the same, but this can't be the lamp I put here. I d d don't appreciate this sort of service. Oh, relax, Mr. Marshall. It's all the same stuff anyway. N n no, sir. When I checked into this facility two months ago, I was promised that there would be no burgling. Burgle? What? Is anything missing? L look around you! Everything's missing! And replaced with exact copies. So what's the big deal? N -n None of these things are mine. Everything's been stolen. And replaced. David Mitch Marshall stopped wringing his hands and stood up straight. He summoned all of his valor and stepped into the room, speaking. It's all been stolen. I demand a new room instantly. Was this mustard stain always on your collar? John was looking closely at one of the white shirts. Y y yes I mean, no. David Mitch Marshall looked down. Y yes it's always been there. Ever since Dinah died. B b but that's not my shirt. How about your bowler? Oh, that's mine. The tenant grabbed his hat off the fake hat rack. I came with I came in with that. Well, Mr. Marshall, the only thing I can do is give you another room and perfect duplicates of everything that was stolen. John unconsciously brushed mittens off the back of his hand. If it happens again, it could just be something following you, and I have no control over that. Well, well see that it doesn't happen again, sir. I, I, I had just lost my share of heirlooms and a lovely red ribbon tie that my late wife gave me. This one? John held it up. N -n no, that's not my tie. Stop that. The next couple of hours were spent removing all the copies of David Mitch Marshall's things and moving them down to hall to room 302. Keys were exchanged and David Mitch Marshall was mildly happier. Yeah, sure, John thought to himself while walking down the stairs. That's the room where a bell rings every time someone lights a candle. John sat back down at his desk and pulled out a dish of dead flies for mittens, assured that he wouldn't see the spider but find the flies missing by the end of the night. I guess I have that to look forward to. As he poured the last finger of whiskey into his glass and rolled it around, he noticed. Huh. This isn't the whiskey I left here. The man shrugged and sipped the exact replica before returning to his tome. If you like Whirlson Gate or Natchian News, hit like, share, subscribe, or what have you.
There's also a link in the doodly-doo if you're kind enough to donate to the cause. Every dollar will bring me that much closer to world domination, or a vanilla latte. Today's noun was the wordless hotel. Leave a comment suggesting your favorite person, place, or thing from this episode of World Sin Gate, and I will include it in the next episode. That way, we'll have all the stories chained together with these little links. Have nothing but fun, YouTubes. Have nothing but fun.